Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We still have some people signing on, but we're going to go ahead and kick off. Thank you all for joining us for the MSP Ignite Resource Network webinar. As always, we're excited to be bringing the webinar series to our members and invited guests. All of the presenters speaking in this series have really made a commitment to you, the channel, to provide uh, actionable insight into areas that can help you grow or otherwise impact your bottom line in a positive way. Before I introduce today's speaker, let me just go over some logistics and ground rules. Um, we always get asked, and yes, we are indeed recording this session. We'll send you an email after the webinar with a copy of the slides, as well as a link uh, to the MSP Ignite YouTube channel, where you'll be able to watch the presentation again. You will all remain muted during the presentation, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. Uh, if you look at the bottom on your, on your Zoom taskbar, there's a Q&A button. Please use that, not the chat, um, to ask any questions you want along the way. Uh, we will go ahead and interrupt and try and weave those into the conversation. But there is indeed a Q&A session at the end, as well as a very nice offer from our sponsor, Augment. Uh, so today, uh, really pleased. We, I've been connected today's speak, to today's speaker for about 20 years. Gavin Garbutt is the co-founder and chairman of Augment. He was also the co-founder and the former CEO of Enable Technologies. Enable really introduced the first RMM tool for this industry, for the IT service providers and also promoted the concept of managed services as early as 2000. Uh, the professional accolades that Gavin has received in the channel are really too numerous to list. Uh, the most important one for me though, is that he has always believed in education first when it comes to working with MSPs. Um, he's proven that over and over and over again, multiple companies. So Gavin, good afternoon, welcome. Steve, thanks very much for having me. I'm excited to be here and uh, to be with the group today. Likewise, we're excited to have you. All right. Well, I'll, ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to this is going to be educational. Um, I'm going to keep the slide side as short as possible um, and try to try to hopefully provide you with some nuggets that you can take back to your businesses to really grow and scale your cybersecurity managed and security services. Um, so, uh, as Steve said, I've been in the industry for a very long time, worked with probably 20,000 MSPs and MSSPs over, over the period. And the thing that gets me most excited is helping MSPs improve their scalability, their profitability, and the services they deliver to their customers. So, um, on that note, uh, George, if we could carry on. Um, so the, the interesting thing is when we talk about cloud services slash SaaS, um, as we all know, during the pandemic, uh, everybody went remote, people went hybrid, and the network and the devices, while still critical and important, um, the adoption of SaaS went ballistic. And uh, over the last five years, the adoption of the number of SaaS applications has increased 770%, which is just crazy, and, um, and is going to continue to grow. Matter of fact, companies are spending 25% more on applications today than they are on devices, and that spread is just continuing to grow. And the devices have really become the utility of IT, while SaaS is really the rocket fuel that powers the growth, competitiveness, and productivity of employees. And I know as a small business owner, just as, as most of you are, and all of your customers are, that what we care about most is that we're most productive, most profitable, and most competitive out in the marketplace. And it's the application layer that is driving that for, for your customers. So with that notion of being the trusted IT advisor, really helping them with all of IT, the traditional network devices, but also the cloud services is so critical to the future of managed services. Uh, so <clears throat> the SMBs have, have adopted SaaS at a crazy rate, and, and now it's what's powering their companies, uh, but they didn't have the tools to be able to manage and secure those applications. And MSPs are only just getting into, we're at the early adopter stage of managed services 
for cloud services. So this is an exciting period because this is when huge profits can be had and where you can really stand out from your competitors by helping the customers manage, secure, and optimize those cloud services. And, and if you think of the biggest SaaS application that, that you folks are familiar with and your customers use day in and day out, um, Microsoft M365 and the security of that, um, the crazy thing is, is 89% of MFA accounts are not enabled today. And Microsoft has literally 1.2 million breaches, like actual breaches every single month. And Microsoft says 99% of those would not have happened if, if MFA was enabled. So it, it's, it's a fascinating thing because as much as um, the SMBs have 89% of their MFA not enabled, most of those are managed by MSPs. So there's a correlation there and there's obviously work to be done in order to go out and improve um, our customers' security policies and posture. And if you think of that again in, in your Microsoft security policy and posture management, and you think back to the traditional, you know, where managed services came from, and it was the whole idea 23 years ago where uh, most MSPs were time material and break fix. They were either chaotic or reactive in their service model. Um, and then they got monitoring and they got to proactive, and then they got monitoring and remediation and management and policies and processes, and they got to manage. Well, it's the same idea with. Microsoft security policy and posture management today, where most MSPs um, are reactive in that they sell the Microsoft M365 licenses, they set up the policies, but they don't have time to go back tenant by tenant by tenant by tenant by tenant to check and see if those policies continue to be relevant and enforced. A proactive um, MSP in, in the Microsoft security policy and posture management would set it up. They would have a tool to proactively monitor the policies. And then once a month, they would go in and they would remediate it, um, any changes or things that needed to be done. A managed service provider, when it comes to Microsoft security policy and posture management, actually monitors it in real time, has the, a tool to be able to remediate it in real time, and then the ability to provide the customer with monthly reports on the security policies and postures and any issues that need to be addressed or improved. So this is, this is the same old journey as managed services were, were 23 years ago, uh, but now it's at the application layer. And today we're talking about Microsoft and we will be talking about other SaaS applications as well, but it's, we wanna help you. We wanna give you the tools so that you can go from reactive to proactive to manage Microsoft security policy and posture management. So now I'm, I'm gonna, this, this is how you make money uh, out of this notion. So the, these are six steps to deliver Microsoft security policy and posture management as a service. So first of all, and I, and I can't emphasize this enough, get your team on board. So, you, you put out the statement, we want to deliver Microsoft security policy and posture management as a service or as part of our premium security service. And, and the team gets on board saying, great, we're going to remotely monitor, manage, and administer, configure, and report on Microsoft security policies for our clients. So it's that simple, but you got to get the team on board. And, and if any of you feel that you would like help with that, I would be happy to personally get on a on a web call with your team and go through the value proposition that we're about to go through with the product today. So the step two is you get an RMM solution for Microsoft and SaaS security management. We're gonna talk about augments today. Um, and then step three is I suggest for all MSPs, they do the first thing first, and that is make sure all of your clients MFA is properly configured and that you're monitoring it and you have the ability to, to real-time remediate any changes or issues. So with, with Augment, you can go through and you can, you can discover, configure, 
um, real-time alerting, remediate, automate, report on all across all of your customers from one single dashboard. So MFA management will no longer ever be an issue again for you. You will basically automate it across all of your clients um, and have that real-time notification um, and configuration and reporting capability. And that's the easiest thing to get your whole team on board on. Yes, MFA is important. Yes, we need to do that and monitor it and enforce it across all of our customers. Nobody will disagree with you on that one. Now, the beauty of our system, the Augment system, is it automatically collects all the data to populate an audit report of your Microsoft security policies and posture. So you can go to each customer with a customized for that customer report to show them all the security issues they have and all the threats and exactly why they should be buying your premium security services. Um, and this, our partners are charging $10 per seat per month for, and it's yielding them a 90% plus gross margin, so gross profit uh, on the service. So this is highly profitable service, and it also discovers a whole bunch of awesome project work. Um, the next part about it is, so A, you're going to grow your cybersecurity services. You're going to discover all of the issues. Your customers are going to be much more secure and better managed. Um, but leveraging the tool, you'll also be able to automate and streamline your administrative and your ticket handling. So it could be things like password management, MFA management, um, employee onboarding, employee offboarding, all of those types of things. And because it's a multi-tenant solution with all of the built-in processes, your junior technicians' capacity and capabilities are going to go up significantly. So they can manage way more tickets per tech, and it's a least privilege access, so they're not going to go in and break things. Um, and all the processes are built in, and you'll have and you have the logs, so you know exactly what's happened. Um, so this is critical. Uh, th this Once you've got Microsoft all nailed down, then use the Augment solution to go and do a SaaS audit. You, you do a nice audit. You show them the report of all their approved applications, all of their shadow IT, what applications are not secure, which ones are not compliant, where you have duplicate applications, unused licenses, help them save some money. And then this, this data is also critical if you deliver security training to your customers because you obviously don't want employees downloading application, putting corporate information in uh, to those applications. And when they leave, that they leave with the client's information, um, the, the, you, the client and maybe even their client's information. So being able to monitor this on real time, report on it every month, get notifications when non-approved applications are, are activated, um, and then being able to train the customers accordingly. And our partners are charging $2 per month per seat for this. And again, yielding 90% gross profits. So these are, these are great services to expand your cybersecurity and to start securing cloud services for your customers. And again, this is the rocket fuel which is driving their companies. And this is what they want to optimize and to make sure is is operating at peak performance but is also secure now for our partners what we also do is we provide all of the sales and marketing materials you need so we'll provide you with the, how you price it um how you deliver it and then call scripts email uh marketing material linkedin content web content uh webinar presentations you name it uh our team works with the partners and you also get a partner development specialist uh, from Augment, who will help you with any sales and marketing programs. And they'll even get on the phone as one of your employees and help you present the, the solution to your customers. So uh, we do everything we can to uh, work with our partners and make them successful. Because at the end of the day, if you're successful, you're going to come back and buy more licenses from us and we'll be successful. So it's a win-win situation. Um, and and here's here's uh, Jacob uh, very kindly gave us a, a, a nice quote a while ago, and um, he's one of your members and uh, an Augment partner, and he's doing great things with the product. 
and really seeing value from it. And uh, we appreciate the support from uh, all of our partners. And we want to we want to earn your business, but we want to also help you be as successful as possible. Uh, on this note, what I'd like to do is stop with the with the presentation side and get into George is going to take over and he's going to actually talk you through how the product actually does everything I just said so that it makes sense. George, over to you. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, just confirming you guys can hear me and can see the uh, my screen here looking at the Augment platform. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. George Smith here. Uh, yeah, as Gavin said, I'm going to take you through uh, a demo of the Augment platform. So we'll jump straight into it. So here we can see Augment. As we talked about, Augment is the, the platform. And uh, within it, we have our three distinct modules, Secure, Discover, and Engage. As a high-level overview, Secure is that, that deep dive into Microsoft security, helping you simplify uh, the security and management of your M365 tenants. Discover is all about that shadow IT, giving you a full list of all the SaaS applications that your clients are using. And Engage is increasing the speed and efficiency with which your technicians can resolve those tickets as we discussed. So let's go ahead and jump into Secure. So with Secure, we've got a number of different reports here that you guys can leverage not only to upsell uh, and acquire new customers by offering sort of enhanced or advanced Microsoft security services, but then also the ability to remediate, manage, and, and really enhance the security of your clients all within the Augment, uh, within the Augment platform. So the first thing I want to show you is the threat report. Now, Augment's fully multi-tenant. So, you know, if we think George, of Microsoft, yes, Gavin. If I can just say to everybody, please pay attention to this threat report because we're going to be announcing a freemium at the end. So th this is going to be particularly interest to help you sell premium security services. Yeah, ex exactly. This is a, a great lever to be able to really highlight the risk and therefore the need for your services to your, your Microsoft customers. Uh, if we think about how a lot of MSPs are, are attempting to do Microsoft security today, because Microsoft isn't multi-tenant, having to go into the portal, find all of this information, collate it, build a report, export that, present it, you know, log out, clear your cache, do the same thing for the next tenant. It's an incredibly manual and cumbersome process. The nice thing about Augment is that we're pulling in all this information uh, to different, um, to, to the Augment platform. So it's just easy for you to come and, uh, and grab these, simply click export. There it is as a PDF. I can go back as far as three months uh, and grab this information. So what we're seeing here is, you know, uh, a number of different security metrics focused on risk. We've got the total risk detection, so we can highlight to the customer. And we can also showcase that their, you know, trend line is now, their risk trend line is increasing over time. Why? Because we're not being proactive with our Microsoft security. So we can highlight things like they might be, you know, a manufacturer or a legal firm in the United States that we're working with. So it's very suspicious and, and uh, interesting to see that they're receiving risky activity from Australia or India or China. We're also able to pull in some key metrics like the Microsoft Identity Score uh, and also the Microsoft Security Score, which is a big one, something that you can highlight to say, you know, Microsoft is saying that you're only 25% secure. That's something that we want to fix for you. Let's take a look at some of the details as to why that is. Here's your top five risk detections that we're seeing, whether it's leaked credentials or, you know, infected IP addresses, or here's your top five accounts at risk. And as we can see in this example, number one and number two are both global administrators. That presents a serious risk to your company and to your Microsoft environment. That's something that we should address immediately. If you're interested in looking at all the different details, well, here we have the risk detections and we can pull this report down to get the who, what, where, when of each kind of threat that's incoming. And the nice thing about Augment is we can filter through this too as well. So let's say we click on users here. I can actually see the users at this company and see the risks associated with each account. So you can see here, Carmen, there's a lot of negative activity going on here. So simply clicking Carmen and now I'm getting all the threat um, a threat and risk associated with Carmen's account directly as well. We can roll that up to keep things simple and we can focus on some, some key pillars of security that you guys all know about already, one of which we've already touched on, MFA. We know it's really important with Microsoft highlighting that, you know, 99.9% .9 of compromised accounts they track every month weren't using MFA. So we want to highlight to the customer that's important. And here you have six people at your company that currently don't have MFA turned on. That's something that we need to get rolled out and fixed straight away. 
We also aware, Mr. Customer, that you have these three inactive accounts just sitting in your environment. Not really sure what's going on there. Have these people left the company? Are they just inactive? Like this is something that we need to, to get cleared up and offboarded uh, immediately. But the bottom line is, you know, this report allows you to say to your customer, you know, how do you want me, the MSP, to handle the risk that I've uncovered for you today? Now, hopefully they see the value and that's where you can provide and upsell your services or acquire a new customer. But if they don't, one of the things that we re are really stressing and seeing the benefits of is highlighting to your customer, okay, that's fine. You denied the service. Please sign this, you know, uh, risk acceptance letter or this denial of service form. You know, we've had customers that are already coming back off the back of uh, that type of initiative saying that you know, it saved them, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases because they went through the threat report with their customer. The customer said, no, we're not going to pay for additional security services. Six months later, they were breached. Uh, the customer comes back with their lawyers and their insurance, pointing the finger at the MSP. And the MSP simply highlights this report uh, and along with the, uh, the sort of you know, denial of services letter uh, and um, kind of things, you know, the, the associated blame evaporates there and then. So uh, a really good process to get into and something that can really help accelerate your business. Now, once you've shared this threat report and hopefully, you know, uh, got some new clients or, or upsold your services, we actually want to start helping our clients increase security. And I'm going to show you now our security posture George, report. Yes, Gavin? Can I just add, um, <clears throat> so, so the idea also, when you, when you do this audit report with your customers and your prospects, because you, you can actually go to unlimited customers and unlimited prospects and run this report. We don't put any restrictions on it, regardless of how many licenses you have. So this is an incredibly powerful sales tool for you. And once you show this to the customer and you identify all the threats and risks and weak policies, and you say, Mr. Customer, here's why you should be buying our premium security services. And if they say, no, 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 thanks, not, not, not today, then then you should have your waiver saying, okay, Mr. Customer, you understand here are the risks and please sign this document saying that you understand we, we will not be helping you with this and you are responsible. Um, <clears throat> that, th that has worked incredibly well for partners. And there was uh, one of our partners just a month ago had uh, a client who they did this with, the client was breached and the insurance company tried to go after the MSP and the MSP brought out the waiver and showed them, here's the report, here's the waiver. And the customer was fully aware and they were completely off the hook. So th this is this is a great sales tool and, and that's great leverage to um, really motivate the end customer to take your premium ser security services. So coming, coming into the offering those services, I'm going to show you the, the security posture report. And really what this does is it, it's incredibly useful for MSPs, again, bringing that multi-tenancy view to Microsoft. So here looking at the old companies, I'm getting that really high level view of all my Microsoft customers and essentially who needs help. And what a lot of people fail to understand, particularly at the customer level, is Microsoft's default setting does not equal secure. OK, a lot of the time they have these great kind of recommendations, these security postures and policies, but those are things that need to be configured uh, and set up. They don't come done out of the box. And so what this report is showing is it's kind of giving you, the MSP, a roadmap of all the different checks that need to be in place in order to enhance the security of this customer. So, you know, drilling into my legal client, I'm not at the tenant level and I can see that, you know, According to Microsoft, there's 15 posture recommendations and we really only have four in place for this customer. So scrolling down, I can see the security check. I can see the status, the associated tags, a bit more detail, uh, and then whether I can configure an alert on that particular check. So let's take a look at the top three here. We've got admin MFA, which looks good. That's configured and all set up, so no issues there. We can look at user MFA, which is only partially configured, and then login portal branding, not configured at all. So now that we've identified some of the things that we need to fix or turn on or configure, we actually want to go ahead and do that. So let's take a look at user MFA as an example. So now I'm actually drilling into the particular check associated with this tenant. We can see here all four of employees associated with this customer. I can look at the compliant ones for this check, aka those that have MFA turned on, and I can look at the non-compliant 
uh, users. So Bruce Wayne here uh, maybe forgot to turn MFA on when he was leaving the Batcave, but that's something we want to get fixed for him as well. So hopping over to the configure tab up here, I've now got some different options to actually set up MFA within Augment itself. So we can do things like Azure per user, simply find Bruce Wayne, tick and force MFA. That's a nice, quick, easy option. We can also do things like set up a conditional access policy from directly within the Augment portal. Again, making life easier for you and your technicians, not having to go into the Microsoft portal uh, to set something up like this. Now, going back to something, say, that uh, like login portal branding, which we can't fix uh, with the click of a button today, we do offer the next best thing, which is when we come to the configure tab, we do offer that link to the Azure portal and then a step-by-step -step instruction guide complete with screenshots of how you would go in and set that up in the portal so you can still get that box ticked uh, and, and get that, uh, that, that green uh, stamp of approval on your security configuration report. So the idea being, guys, that ultimately what you're looking for is everything to look green here. And so that whenever you come back to your all companies view, you can quickly see, you know, who needs help or if you're onboarding new clients, you know, who needs what. But ultimately, you're looking for everything to look green and secure and get that security baseline set really high. Now, on the subject of MFA, we also have an MFA report here, which is actually one of our most popular reports in Augment. Again, because it focuses on a very specific security metric that for us is almost step one in terms of helping your clients increase their security. You know, let's get MFA turned on, like whether it's a, a project that you offer or just, you know, step one. So here we've got our all companies view, again, giving us that high level of the MFA status. We're able to see, you know, at a glance who needs a little bit of help, as well as some of the common authentication methods that they're using. And then we can actually drill in to the tenant level. OK, so looking at my legal client here, I'm now able to scroll down and I can see all the employees. I can see what license type they're using within Microsoft. I can see their role. And then most importantly, I can see their MFA configuration. So are they using per user MFA? Have they got a conditional access policy set up or a combination? And then, of course, their actual status. Are they protected? Yes or no. And how are they authenticating? Is it using a key, a password, or something like Duo? So for those folks who out there who are using Duo, we're really proud that we've um, recently announced our integration with them. So Augment now provides one of, if not the only, sort of Venn diagram, giving you that full picture of MFA status for Microsoft that is taking into account both the Microsoft Authenticator as well as Duo status as well. Because prior to that, unfortunately, sometimes that those that information could become a little bit disjointed with someone using Duo, Microsoft saying they weren't using MFA, getting that connection set up. Then Microsoft says, yes, they're using Duo, so MFA is turned on. A week later, maybe they turn it off in Duo or something happens, and that update isn't reflected in Microsoft. So using this report gives you that high-level Venn diagram full view. And perhaps most importantly, we have the ability to export it as well as set up scheduled reports as well. So you can, can not only get access on a schedule to these reports, but also share that information regularly with your clients. Now, once we've talked about kind of building the security posture, you know, building that security wall, getting things to a really high standard, you know, what happens if, if, if something changes? OK, that's where our posture alerts comes in. And these are really cool because, again, we can go to all companies and see what we've got toggled on and off for our different Microsoft tenants. But I, what this is doing is it's saying, you know, for admin MFA or user MFA, if an admin turns off MFA, you know, send, send a ticket through to my PSA. If there's a decrease in compliance, I want to know about that. Same thing goes for users. Maybe they turn it off. Maybe a new user gets added to the Microsoft environment and doesn't actually set up MFA. That's going to be a decrease in compliance of that 100% score that we're looking for. So tell me about it. Same thing for inactive accounts. If an account becomes inactive, send a ticket through to my PSA. And so that way, using these posture alerts, you'll be notified immediately uh, if there is a decrease in compliance, if something's changed in a negative way so that you can you know, take, take action uh, to, to get that security posture back up to where it needs to be. Hey, That's George. Awesome. Hello. Not sure if it's Steve. Not sure if you're seeing. We have a couple of questions in q and I don't know if you want to pause or you want to keep going. Yeah, no, let me just take a quick look here. 
are there any N365 add-ons dependencies for the recommendations to come up easy defender for endpoint, et cetera? Um, yeah, there's like, I think the thing is with, with Microsoft, there's, there's a lot of great products out there. Um, I think what we're really looking to focus on uh, is, is giving you guys access to that multi-tenancy and particularly around the security posture. One of the things that we've seen with some of the products, a lot of folks out there are offering business premium so purchasing business premium licenses which is great because it comes with a lot of those uh, additional security focused tools as part of that license um for anyone who's interested i would encourage you to go on our website we actually have a microsoft licensing series where absolutely in some cases business premium is a is a great product and call for certain customers but for others we have a slightly different approach where if you purchase a business standard license and then add on an Azure P1 to get your kind of admin security outlook, that you're, you're saving yourself a lot of margin that un un unlocking that, which with you can kind of buffer some of your existing security tools, whether it's an augment or a firewall or whatever, uh, and ultimately charging your customer the same price, but you've just unlocked yourself more margin. So getting some more profitability there. So I encourage folks to, to check out that webinar on demand, or we have a little ebook on it if you're interested in seeing what that math looks like. Um, yeah, let me just get to this second question here. Is it possible for us to define a custom security baseline configuration we want to enforce to all clients? So currently today, no, but that is is something that is on the product roadmap. You know, we're aware that um, whenever we go back to the security posture, these are the recommendations that Microsoft is putting forward, but you as an MSP may want to adjust these or add your own and then roll that out to your clients. So it is something that, that you know, we're working on and looking into uh, and hopefully- Yes, Gavin. Can you can you show where you can turn on and off the policies? So you, yeah. you can customize to a degree in that you can choose which policies you want to have um, by customer or across your customers. So uh, if there were things that you did not want to show up on there, you can actually turn them off. Yeah, exactly. So we can we can ignore these policies. So that way, because you can you can show this report as well. Um, right. And then that way you can see what's configured, what's partially configured, what's not configured, and then what's ignored as well. Right. So it's easy to ignore some of these checks. Again, if there's a particular one that you're, you know, maybe, maybe not interested in, or, or maybe just don't want to show as part of your reporting. Uh, you know, so so things continue to look green for the purposes of reporting to your clients. That's something that we can do as well. Well, and, and the beauty of it is that if you turn off some of the policies that you're that you're managing or you're reporting on, that will actually affect the Microsoft score also. So if um, you know you branding of the part of the uh, of the portal is not important to you, then you can actually turn that off in the in your notification or in in your there we go that's exactly it so you can turn on and off these policies and that will affect your score uh so you can customize it in that way uh so i i hope that answers the question that's our step one our step one in customization and that's really cool because nobody else offers that and again, you can do it for all your tenants. So across the board, if there's a particular metric that you know you want to exclude for all all Google tenants, that's easily done with the click of a button. Or if it's just for a specific company, you know you can select that company from here. Um, just seeing another question come through from Nick. Can we monitor? Oh, sorry, that's the same one. Or is that is that a different one? Can we monitor for custom policies and monitor the settings and teams that prevents download of infected? files. So and the, I believe that's not one currently that we have, but I know our product team are both adding uh, additional security checks. So to to this list, as well as different alerts on a, on a monthly basis. So, uh, you know, to get more information on that, you can definitely join our, our partner uh, call. We have every quarter to get much more granular information on what's coming up on the product roadmap. Uh, and then, of course, it's a great opportunity for our partners to really vocalize the the things that they want to see within the product. And, and we love getting that specific information on specific alerts or policies that, that you guys value and want to see added um, as soon as possible. So on that note, I'm just going to hop into the last couple of reports within Secure here. Uh, we have our threat alerts. So for anyone, you know, I speak to a lot of MSPs and, you know, I would say probably 70% of the ones that I speak to do a lot of work in Microsoft, but tend to not to use the uh, the Microsoft 
uh, alerts. The reason for that is, is that unfortunately in the portal, Microsoft alerts is either on or off. And if it's on, use the MSP, get a lot of emails because it will notify you, sure, of maybe security risky events that you do want to hear about. But you'll also hear, you know, about all kinds of different things like an update was done or an admin completed this thing. And, and so things become very, very noisy. So how we're helping that with our threat alerts is by going to settings here, we're giving MSPs the ability to look through the list of, of Microsoft alerts and begin to categorize and filter the ones that they want to see. So you can see here, admin submission result completed. Okay, that for me as an MSP in this scenario is not something that I want to create a ticket for or, or be notified on. That's, that, that's not something I'm, I'm particularly interested in. However, if there is activity from a Tor IP address or activity from an infrequent country uh, and it's of a medium or a high alert threshold, because again, certain alerts, there's a high threshold, medium, low, uh, sometimes they're not all the same, you can begin to dictate which emails or tickets get created for the alerts that you're interested in. So in that way, we can scroll up here and see that so far this month, over 42 alerts have been created by Microsoft, so more than one a day, but only 22 emails have been sent and only two tickets have been created. So just helping kind of reduce some of the, the noise and, and allowing you to focus on the key things that, that you actually want to be notified of from Microsoft. Yeah, and the cool thing is when you're, when you're putting in a, a new customer, it actually gives you the prediction of how many alerts you're going to get before you turn it on. So it's not like you're just turning on a fire hose, and you're going to get a million alerts. You, you have an estimate before you actually turn it on. So you can modify whether they're high, medium or low or how, or what you want to be alerted on. Yeah, it's a great point, Gavin. And that, that allows you as the MSP also just get some insight into what's happening. So, you know, do we need to, is there other security policies and uh, postures that we need to be configuring and enforcing here? Is it something around user training? Just giving you a better indication of, of, of you know, what the kind of risky activity is associated with. The other cool thing is coming back to the actual alerts dashboard here, we get an overview of all the alerts that are being generated. We can see, you know, we can create a ticket or we can see that, that something was automatically sent through based on the rules that we've set up. But perhaps most importantly, using our engage functionality, which I'll come on to later, by simply clicking the alert, we get access to some functions that allow us with a click of a button to do things like reset the password, block sign in, or sign out, sign out of all apps. So that way we know that when an alert comes through, again, we don't need to log into the Microsoft portal. We can react really, really fast and take action to secure or lock down uh, that particular user account. Now, the last report I'll show you is the summary report, which is kind of like the opposite of the threat report or what we coined sort of the this is what you pay me for report. And I'm sure a lot of folks on the call are familiar with the idea of customers coming to you and saying, you know, everything's broken. What am I paying you for? Or everything's working just fine. What am I paying you for? This is a report that you can share on a monthly, on a quarterly basis. Again, we have the, the, the date filter here so you can show, go, you know, generate months, uh, months of, of data. Uh, and, and it just highlights the value that you're providing. So, you know, you can go in and say, actually, Mr. Customer, this month already, we've prevented 15 incidents so far. You can see here that your trend line is now going down because we are being proactive with security. Well, what does that mean? We've got some of those policies and procedures in place. So now your identity score and your secure score are both over 85%, which is great. And in terms of getting some more granular information, well, here's some of the risky sign-in detections that we've come across and risky users that we've blocked along with, you know, IP addresses, countries. And in terms of those incidents, again, I can roll this down and show you the who, what, where, when, filter by user, filter by location, you know, if you want to dive into some of the things that we've done. Um, but this, Mr. Customer, is why you're paying for, you know, that advanced Microsoft cybersecurity plan that, that you're on. And this is the value that we're providing. I'm just going to check and see another question has popped up. Uh, okay, that's all good. Great. Uh, if anyone has any other questions on secure or wants to see anything in more detail, please just pop it in the, the Q&A. Um, but for now, we're looking good. So I'm just going to hop tracks quickly into engage. Unless, Gavin, was there anything else you wanted to, to mention? While well, we're in I think that's 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 great. Well, uh, let's carry on to with this engage and discover. 
Great. So engage guys, really, really simple. A lot of MSPs love this because it's all about, you know, just saving time and, and enabling and optimizing your workforce. So what we're doing here is again, fully multi-tenant hopping between my different Microsoft clients. I'd also add that engage works for Google as well. So that's a nice value add if you're managing any, any Google clients. And simply all that happens is, is let's say a ticket comes through for Adam, I'm gonna take Adam, I now have access to these certain actions and so can resolve any tickets associated. And it really is this simple guys, you know, MFA, click of a button, block sign in, click of a button, something like a password reset needs to be done, no problem, click password reset. Augment bakes all the best practices in. So are we auto-generating or manually creating? Well, auto-generation is going to be better, so we'll leave that as it is. Same thing, keeping those best practices, we want to make sure that they reset the password and they log in. And then am I sending it to myself at the MSP or am I sending it through to, you know, Adam's boss, Brandon, reset password, done. So again, in real time, someone can come in, click Adam, click reset password, done. And in this way, it allows you to leverage interns, office administrators, even HR, essentially non-technical people. You can set them up and augment and you know, empower them to begin to resolve some of these tickets. That's going to free up your senior technicians, who I'm sure you're paying big bucks for, to focus on the complex IT tasks and the project work that you know is it, are those lucrative projects for you. Even something a bit more sophisticated, like let's say Brian is leaving the company, something like offboarding. They can click remove user. Again, augment is baking in the best practices. And I'd highlight that, you know, these were actually informed whenever we were creating this by our MSP advisory board. So we went to our, our, our customers and kind of said, when you're offboarding someone in Microsoft, what are some of the best practices that, that you follow? What are the things that are that are helpful? Uh, and so they're, you know, we, we love collaborating with our partners so we can create functionality that is meaningful um, for you guys. So things like doing an automatic reset password automatically signing Brian out of all the applications and then blocking him from signing in and then having options to, you know, create a shared mailbox. So other people have access to, to his email and other corporate information and setting up rules for, you know, who that goes to. Hit next, review, delete user, done. So again, making things very straightforward and easy, keeping your customers happy because uh, tickets are getting resolved and increasing your profit margin because you're able to use less technical people to resolve tickets in a very speedy, efficient way. So that then finally brings us on to Discover. And uh, with Discover, uh, you know, this is, again, a really, really great, great way to open conversations with your clients, you know, at a high level around cybersecurity and shadow IT in general. We're seeing a lot of our current partners at leverage this to really amplify their, their VCIO services to help cement their position as that IT expert, because what Discover is doing is, is helping give back that visibility into who's using what, which, you know, we've lost now that the network is shrinking and so many people are working from home, but also at uh, signing up to SaaS and cloud applications left, right, and center. So in terms of using Discover, again, we can export this information. So PDF, CSV, Excel, we can go as far back as three months if we want to generate a, a more detailed report. And we've got our all companies view as well as our different tenants here. So let's pick on marketing for this example. So how Discover works is we have a lightweight agent that gets deployed via RMM. We have integrations with all with you know the vast majority of RMMs, uh, you know, so it gets deployed seamlessly and silently. That agent then is parsing out the web traffic of that particular user and setting it against our database of over 22,000 SaaS applications. So we're able to pull in that information when it gets pulled in. Augment automatically gives it some scores around approval status, risk high, medium, low, or productivity high, medium, low. Now, it's important to note that you, the MSP, can change those scores, of course. So if you disagree with how we've, we've scored something or you want to create exceptions to some of the global rules that are put in place, everything's customizable so you can set things up the way you like it. What this allows you to do fundamentally is go to your clients and say, you know, Mr. Customer, how many SaaS applications are you using? And guaranteed, they will usually have no idea. Okay, so in this scenario, they might say, oh, we only use five. Actually, no, you've got 19 applications that folks are using. You know, should uh, anybody at your company be using Dropbox, for example? No, nope, we have a policy that says Dropbox is forbidden. No one's allowed to use it. Oh, okay, interesting, because I have a report here that I can show you that says, I mean, we agree it's restricted, it's high risk, it's low productivity. 
but I can show you that these three employees at your company have been using Dropbox, you know, this often over the past three weeks. And we even have the ability to differentiate between the browser version and the desktop version, okay, which is a nice distinction as well. In fact, we can tailor this report to show days active so we can actually build this list so that it's the most popular applications first, which is helpful for not just you, but perhaps the CEO or the CFO to understand who's using what applications, because then that allows you, the MSP, to have conversations around productivity, okay? Are people sitting on social media all day or even around cost? I mean, for me, that's a big one. You know, a lot of folks are, are saying, no, I can't afford, you know, additional money for cybersecurity. Like, you know, it's, it's just uh, the purse strings are tight. Okay, well, if I can look at your shadow IT and identify unused licenses or you know, redundant apps that people aren't using or duplicate apps, or maybe you're paying for five applications that do the same thing. If we can go through that process and save you some money, can you put that money towards, you know, enhancing your security with me as well? Um, again, just providing that data to help your customers make a, an informed decision. Just going to check Q&A here. I see some more questions have come through. Gavin, while I do that, was there anything else you wanted to add on yeah, to Discover I Engage? Absolutely. The so so the discovery is as George was saying. It's that the you know trusted IT advisor. Um, as we said before, people are spending more on software than they are on devices and network, and that is only increasing. And the applications are what is driving a corporate's productivity, profitability, and competitiveness out there. So the business owner cares about this. Um, they may not be telling you. Can you do this for me? But if you go in and show them this information and, you know, you before you do the audit, you say, well, can you give me a list of your applications? They give you a list, you run the audit um, and you show them, okay, here's your approved list. Here's all of your shadow IT um, and exactly, you know, what's, what's uh, high security, low security, uh, you know, employees will be downloading apps and putting corporate information into those apps. And when they leave, they leave with that data. Is that compliant? Uh, is that secure? Uh, obviously not. Uh, so that's a key thing. And that if you do security training, that's key data to have, knowledge to have in order to be able to help the company do proper security training. Um, and as George said, with cost optimization on licenses, you know, you, you might have Salesforce and a, and a customer and they may have 15 licenses, but you can see only 12 of them are in use and two people may only log in once a month. Well, guess what? We can save you or help you save a whole bunch of money on your Salesforce licensing. Same could be true for Adobe, et cetera, et cetera. So these are real opportunities for you to stand out from other MSPs and really help the customer get their hands around their cloud services uh, from a security perspective and from an optimization perspective. You run the audit once, you go and you review it with them, you set up the notifications. So if somebody downloads an app that they're not supposed to, you know, and you can inform the customer and you just provide them with monthly reports on all of this stuff. And because the platform has granular permissions and a lot of our partners are using this with their, particularly with their mid enterprise customers. You can give customers permission to do very specific things. Just view Discover, just use the Engage module, just do security, um, or you can give them views, admin rights, and you can do it by uh, service. So you, you may want to give the CFO and the CEO views of the dashboard of secure. Um, and the, this is highly valuable information for them to have. So um, I, I'm, I'm very excited actually about the Discover module because I believe that you can't manage what you don't monitor and measure. And uh, that's what all of this is about. You, you've got to, got to measure and monitor and then you have the information to take action. Yeah, 100%, Gavin. We've just got a couple of uh, of questions that have come in. So Nate asked, can this tool automatically block sign-in of an account that's been potentially compromised, e.g. by phishing? If no, does it have alerts that would surface a potentially compromised account? So uh, Nate, the answer simply is there's no automatic block of the, the sign-in uh, today. But as I mentioned, we've got kind of two, two things. One, is the the secure so you know the threat alerts here that are set up so there's there's lots of different 
uh, threat alerts associated with how or you know or why an account might be compromised. It could be maybe a successful login from a, a blacklisted IP address or, or you know suspicious IP address, something like that. And again, using the engage functionality, we have the ability with the click of a button to do things like block sign in, sign out of all apps, uh, or even just hop over to engage, find the, the employee here, maybe it's Adam, and do it that way as well. Um, so so kind of with using a combination of those two, uh, yeah, you're able to kind of get real time information if, if an account is, is compromised or under attack and then kind of take action to lock it down immediately. And, and I'll, just, I'll add I'll, I'll add to that, George, is like and, and George mentioned this before, but we are an incredibly a partner forward company and we have quarterly calls with our partners and uh, to review product roadmap things that are coming out and to take recommendations from the partners. And, and having said that, you can send in recommendations every single day if you like. Um, also, uh, because that that's what's going to make us better and advanced configuration and automation is the direction of this platform as we go forward. Yeah, there's there's democratic consideration uh, given when it comes to our product roadmap. I know for a fact the guys in the product team have a have a large chart of different feature and functionality requests and keep a tally of of you know how often or frequently things are requested by by MSPs. So if that is something that is of interest to you, I strongly encourage you to kind of submit that request and uh, kind of put another tick against that box and, and bump it up the list. The second question we have from Dan Robinson. Dan, thanks for the question. Uh, is there a way to automate offboarding of a mailbox when a client says delete this user end of day? Could we set a self-destruct, self-destruct for time and day? Dan, great question. Um, the answer to that today is, is no, but I know what you're talking about. The idea that again, if Addison's leaving uh at the end of the week, say Friday, I can come in here, click remove user, set all this up, and then have a nice little thing that says, you know, execute this on Friday at 5 p.m. Uh again, see my it's it's not it's something that's on the roadmap uh, again if you know i think that would be a pretty cool feature myself and that way you know you can get set things up in advance um yeah it's kind of same same uh, action item though uh submit that request and, and get another tick next to that um that feature request but uh something our product team are aware of and has been uh requested by other folks so if there's no other questions, guys, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just hop back over to a few slides. We've just got one more slide to uh, to share with you guys. There's a special offer um, that we want to roll out to the MSP Ignite community. Uh, and I'll uh, pass over to Gavin to take you guys through that. So for, first of all, um, uh, thank you very much for the time today. And we and we have time for Q&A uh, also. So if you've got more questions, please fire away. We're, we're happy to answer them. But um, you know, we, we'd all love you to take the product for a spin. Um, so you know, obviously, a trial is uh, is there and available for you. And um, at, but at the very least, at the very very least, that when George was presenting at the beginning of the secure module, the the threat and audit report, um, you can have that as a freemium. So. You can have you can you can register. You'll get a 14-day trial of the product. You will get unlimited um, threat reports and audit reports. That that initial report that you can use against all of your customers, all of your prospects, and it's free. So at the very least, take advantage of that because that is an incredibly powerful tool for you to to see what your customer base is, is like and to be able to upsell your premium security services. Um, we're also offering um, what, what we call a site license, and that gives you up to 2,000 seats of all three modules. So discover, engage, and secure. And it's $299 a month. You guys actually are going to get a 15% discount off that. So it comes out to like $250 a month. So that's less than $0.05 cents per seat. It's our normal price is $0.79 cents per seat. So it's basically, I, I like to say it's basically free. You can manage all your customers, have some growth area um, on Secure Engage and Discover uh, for about $250 a month, and you're set to go. Um, and you can do unlimited threat reports against all of your other customers or prospects 
and we just want to help you sell more. And as we say, we have all the marketing material. You become a partner. You get access to the partner development specialists, the academy, all of that stuff to help you sell more cloud security services. Um, and so I, I'm super excited. This is like the early days of managed services. Um, and this is managed cloud and security services. And I believe this is the, the next big opportunity for MSPs to grow and scale their, their business and their profitability. So please, anybody have any questions? My on the next slide, I believe, is my email. Uh, don't hesitate. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, George. We do have uh, one more question that was posted in the chat, George, uh, by Clint de, de Guerra. Uh, by any chance, do you offer a customer portal and APIs so this data can be presented or extracted? Uh, this is this. Uh, what I was mentioning earlier, the, the granular permissions, you can, if you co-manage um, or you just want to give every customer a view of any one of the modules or any aspect of the modules, Yes, you can. This is this is your has your branding on it. So we have a brand. It's got a branding mechanism in the in the product. So you put in your logo, your color schemes, etc., and then you can give customers uh, either view rights or administrative rights on a granular basis. Awesome, thank you, Gavin. You mentioned that early on that it's a it's also a sales tool, a great sales tool, and if I'm understanding correctly. You're basically saying to our our members, hey, you can have you can have this for free for 14 days, install it on every client you have, and then use that information to not only not only sell other services, but also to sell Augment as a tool that should stay installed. Does that sound correct? Well, it, and so the uh, full 14 day trial of the full product suite. And that secure audit solution to go and do the Microsoft security audit and threat yep. report is free for life. Awesome. Unlimited. So if Fantastic. you have a million prospects, you can go and run that on a million companies. Fantastic. Um, great offering. Great job as always. Uh, thank, thank you all for your time. We certainly hope the information you received today was actionable and helpful. Um, I believe the action is pretty straightforward. Reach out to Augment, sign up, give it a shot. Um, for those not already participating in one of our peer groups, um, we'd love to hear from you and discuss the value along with our money back guarantee. Um, Gavin, George, thank you so much for your, your time and your expertise and your constant support of what we do. Oh, it's, Steve, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having us. And, and please, everybody, I, I really honestly believe at least the audit piece, the whole thing, but the the secure audit reporting is a must have to grow and scale your cybersecurity practice. And it's free. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.